okay, integral b dotted into dl mu zero i enclosed. Looks very similar, aren't they? Uh, you have integral, this is a closed integral, b, but the difference is it's a line integral dotted into the dl. It's a line integral. The Gauss's law is a surface integral over a whole complete surface, whereas, whereas this one is a line integral around a closed line. But this part of the equation looks very similar to that. You got mu zero on top. Over there, you have E zero on the bottom. Then I enclosed, but there you have Q. So again, what it's saying is, in order to create a magnetic field, the charge has to be moving. There has to be I then to create a magnetic field. So what would be the usefulness of this law? This is the Ampere's law. It will be useful in finding the magnetic field in certain symmetric situations, right? Which will be what? Cylindrical wire, which is kind of long. It's going to help us to find the magnetic field of that cylindrical wire, either outside of the wire or inside of the wire, just like the Gauss's law was for the, the cylindrical uh, conductor. So this will allow us for cylindrical wire, and spherical is a little bit tougher. It could do it, but uh, that one's probably a little bit tougher to do for the things. I think mainly it's a cylindrical one for this. <clears throat> okay, then there's a little addition to Ampere's law, which is the last thing we'll see in this chapter. It looks like this. Integral B dotted into DL is mu zero I enclosed, so that's the, f the first part is the same, plus mu zero E zero d phi E dt. Okay, th what this is saying is this. If you want to create a magnetic field, you can either have a current to create a magnetic field, or you can s simply change the electrical flux over time. If the electrical flux changes over time, you also create a magnetic field. So changing electrical field causes a magnetic field. As a matter of fact, this is how a light wave is created, the light that we see. What's the light wave composed of? A light weight is composed of an electric field that's fluctuating up and down a, as a sine wave. So the electric field is constantly changing over time. Therefore, an electric field that is changing over time produces a what? A magnetic field. But since the electric field is changing over time in a changing fashion as a sine function, the derivative of sine is what? Cosine. So when you take the derivative of sine, you get cosine. That means the magnetic field will also be changing, OK, as a, as a cosine wave. And a changing magnetic field creates what? A, ch a changing magnetic field creates a changing electric field. So the cycle continues. We will learn that in chapter 31. Changing magnetic field creates a changing electric field. So they enhance each other, kind of. The magnetic field looks like this. It's perpendicular and this is known as the, top, the topic of electromagnetic waves. It's covered in chapter 34 of your book, which we don't cover this semester. They go more in depth into that and they talk about the nature of EM waves. They put together everything we've learned and this is known as Maxwell's four equations, four equations of electromagnetism. Maxwell was the first one to take a back step and take a look at the big picture of electro, electricity and magnetism. And he saw the connections. He made the connections, like that museum 
analogy I gave. He made the connections. And he said, oh, OK, changing electric field, producing magnetic field, changing magnetic field, producing electric field. He saw the connection, and he goes, wow, that's a light wave. That's how we see stars. And one time he was walking with his wife-to-be. He said, I'm the only one in, on Earth who understands how we see stars. And now I want to propose to you to marry me. And then his wife said, I, I want. That's OK. I think I want to marry you, you know. You're the only one who understands the stars, OK? It's a real story. OK, so now.